Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be replacing the power switch on the Marantz 2250B. So one of the more common failure points on these receivers is actually the power switch. I've already replaced the power switch on this one and I'm recording this video after I've done all the work because I ran into quite a few issues doing this and they're mostly my fault. What I tried doing is I tried using a switch that is now obsolete and is better suited for first gen Marantz receivers like a 2270. So in this video I'll explain all the issues I ran into and how I overcame them. From what I've seen on the internet you can find power switch replacement kits for these Marantz receivers. These kits will include a brand new power switch, they'll include a new uh, button cover that looks just like the original, and they'll include a snubber capacitor for uh, safety. A snubber capacitor basically prevents arcing in the switch, it makes the switch last a little bit longer. Some of these receivers have them installed already, others don't. This one did not have one originally, so I added one. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started on replacing the switch. So the first thing we need to do is take off the faceplate. It's just like we're changing the light bulbs again. So there it is, right there. Nope, see? This is not a good switch. You don't want that. Next thing we do, begin to remove this plate. Try to make this a little easier. I'm gonna take a piece of scotch tape, put it around this pulley here to keep the uh, string in place. And there you have it, folks. And now we see a clear path to the uh, power switch here. Next thing we'll do is we'll actually remove the power switch itself. But let's, uh, let's pull this off real quick. If you haven't done so already, you seriously need to unplug your receiver. Next, I will flip this on its side. I will pull this out. And there you have it. You have your two wires going to your power switch. There's plenty of resources online where you can find uh, new replacement power switches for uh, the Marantz receivers. A lot of them come with a new button also because if you look at the old button right here, you'll see that it has a, uh, a different uh, size opening for the switch. So you'll see this shaft here, it will not fit over that button, so we're gonna have to modify this. Another thing that's really unfortunate is uh, I tried installing this switch and then I realized the holes do not line up. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to drill out the holes on the Marantz with a drill and a drill bit, and that way there will be enough clearance in the uh, chassis holes to allow the switch screws to thread to the, uh, the new switch here, so. We'll start with 3 sixteenths. Oh yeah, that's way better. Okay, so now it's time to figure out how much to drill out the switch itself, or the, uh, the button. So I'll turn this back on. I'll measure um, the diagonal here. I find that to be 0.17 inches. I think I'll try this by hand. It's super sketch, but I think... So that was sketchy as hell. I know I'm trying to preach safety around here, but uh, that was just convenient. See? Look at that. It fits right on. The shaft is too short. So I overlooked something fairly serious. Um, this is a switch that I've used to replace power switches on like uh, Gen 1 models like a 2270 or a 2230. Um, these, these second gen models have a different switch. It's like this. And uh, if you look at this surface right here and this surface right here, you'll see that they're uh, different and that means that this power switch, when it's on the new switch, is going to sit very far inside the receiver compared to uh, the old switch. So what I'm going to need to do is find some uh, 
material to put right in here that uh, kind of meets up at this line here. That's about where the old switch lines up with the new one. And then I'll have to fill this with quite a bit of glue and then glue everything together uh, pretty nicely on there. What I ended up doing is I just sacrificed uh, an old uh, Bic Ultra Round Stick grip pen and uh, I drilled out this inside part a little bit with the drill so that it'll fit over this shaft and then I'm going to take the uh, the outside part I'm going to put it over here and uh, what that's going to do is it's going to give me uh, a little bit of extra material for the uh, the face of this uh, button to not that one the face of this button to uh, kind of glue itself to once we're uh, all set so I want just up to that line right there so I guess I'll get to cutting with my razor blade we'll see how this goes I don't know how easy this is gonna be there we are all they need is like didn't go too far okay I think that's looking pretty good now Oh, I tell you what, I really was not expecting this to be such a uh, painful process. Normally this is really easy, but uh, this time it's really hard. So, anyways, let's let's start replacing this switch now. How about that? Okay, so red in front, orange in back. Let's remember that. We'll cut these as close as we can to the wire because we're going to strip these next so that we have as much wire as possible. So at this point, after you've stripped your wires, if you're not adding a snubber capacitor, just solder your wires to the new switch just like they were on the old switch and you're basically good to go. If you are adding a snubber capacitor, hopefully it has longer leads than mine. And if that's the case, you should be okay creating a uh, bridge, if you will, between the two sets of poles like I'm doing in this one. But if it doesn't have long leads, you'll need to find some wire. If you've got solid conductor wire, that's helpful. If you've got some dead components with some leads on them that you could use as a solid conductor that works too and then once you've got all that together soldering it together is pretty simple just make sure your solder flows nicely around the entire terminal and the uh, wires you've got in the terminal and uh, that's about it you should be good to go if you're replacing a snubber capacitor be sure you install it the same way the old one was installed all right you know what i think this looks pretty damn good I think it's time for a test. So I'll be very careful. I have this on the dim bulb tester. It means I can get a shock if I touch these. So I'm going to keep my finger back there. I'll turn this on. Look at that. The power switch works. So now that I have this piece of the chassis back on, I have my little uh, piece of plastic here that I made to uh, get the button to stick out a little bit further. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to take the face plate and I'll put it on just for a test fit. And we will get that good and then we'll take our button. We'll just kind of take a look and see if it looks okay. And to me, this looks like it's very close to the... Uh, stock protrusion if you will what i'm going to do is i'll glue this all together and then i'll take um i don't know the old filter capacitor and i'll just kind of butt it up against it so that it's flat and then i'll let it dry like that so at this point i'm using a combination of aline's tacky glue and some super glue i'm filling the button covers whole with tacky glue just because it's cheap and then i'm using super glue to actually make sure that the uh the face of the button cover and that little spacer actually adhere to the switch shaft. So once I've done that, I let it dry with that filter capacitor butted up against it to make sure it dries straight. So there it is. A brand new, just replaced power switch. We can see that it works just fine. It turns the receiver on much more reliably than the old switch. And if we get the faceplate on it, we can see that the uh, protrusion distance is very close to stock because of that spacer that I made for uh, the switch there. 
because I didn't use the right replacement or I didn't have the uh, correct size uh, button cover. So, moral of this video is if you can get the right part and it costs like maybe a few dollars more versus like what you have in stock like I did, just buy the right part. Save yourself the trouble. It's going to make you uh, a lot happier in the end. So, that's it. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you to all the new subscribers, and if you haven't subscribed yet, this receiver is on its way to getting a full restoration. I'm going to be posting a lot of videos on everything I do to fully restore this, and you'll definitely not want to miss that. So thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.